everyone, this is me, the Bob Zera. I have with me Roy Joseph. He is sales manager at Tinder, covering Middle East region. We will have a quick chat with him, and we will get to know more about Tinder's position in Middle East region and the latest trends in wireless and networking solutions. So let's welcome Roy Atticus. Hi, Roy. How are you? Uh, great. Uh, so uh, let's start with uh, uh, talking about Tinder, obviously. How do you position yourself in the Greece and Africa region? Uh, thank you very much for the question. Actually, uh, in the region, we are in the US Pacific region, we've been present since 2014. Uh, we expanded our operations in 2018, uh, where we went with our local warehousing facility, etc. in general. Post that, uh, the major requirement for as a company or the focus of the company was looking to build up uh, a distribution network across. Uh, keeping that in mind, uh, we have installed uh, around eight uh, distributors in the region and a lot of new ones coming on board. So the journey so has been eight distributors, I mean. Currently, eight distributors, and uh, we're not present in all the regions. Mm -hmm. uh, that being said, uh, we still uh, covering. And getting to know into a stepping stones into more new regions rather. Uh, our top performing regions in the Middle East would be Gray, Iraq, Lebanon, Jordan, etc. Uh, we have very little presence as a today in Africa. In terms of positioning of the product, we basically come into the server segment, which is the entry level segment for home routers and entry level segment of SMB products. So uh, as a man, we have a machine of 18 years, which are 23 years actually, uh, and we are slowly gearing up for the upcoming new trends. So, as we speak, uh, we have coming up with new product launches, which basically are getting to be the mainstay or uh, mainstream products as the market is demanding. Uh, previously, we had certain number of products that we should deal with, which was required for the market. Uh, a lot of the new products today in 5G or in 5G6 uh, still have not yet become 100% minister. So we launched the 5G6 products, but we see the 5G6 e coming up soon. So we'll soon be having products on those lines as well. And that's how we basically slowly want to establish a footprint in the market. The current market segment we're doing is a pretty challenging consumer segment. And it is a very price sensitive segment. So we uh, live by the motto of the company where we provide you the better quality of product uh, at an affordable price without having to compromise a lot of things. Yes, that, that's right. Uh, so, uh, Roy, uh, we hear a lot about like Wi Fi 6 is barely off the ground. We are already hearing about Wi Fi 7. So, since the pandemic has begun, how have uh, the trends in networking and wireless uh, solutions evolved? And what are the trends you foresee in and, and the coming years? So, let me break it up into two parts to be precise. Uh, during the pandemic and post pandemic. So, during the pandemic, what we saw is we saw a surge in demand. A lot of people forced to work from home and you know, required wireless products. So previously you had a regular router which basically when you were working at the office or in school, once you finish you come home and then you have to use that. The actual load on the system was minimal during only the time in which the person was at home in the evening usually or after school hours. But uh, during the pandemic, uh, schools shut down as well as a lot of uh, people were asked to work from home because of various restrictions. And we saw that uh, the appetite for the customer, the, the, the existing systems that they had, were not good enough for them, which was okay when they were paper company. Mm -hmm. So we saw a lot of demand coming on with that, and demand actually picked up uh, really quite well. We actually grew by more than 55 percent during the pandemic. The growth continues to be there, and we see that uh, we are on a growth curve right now compared to pre and post, or pre and during the pandemic. So, if I could consider this to be an end of it, uh, we definitely it looks are. Like it. Yeah, it definitely looks like So, for this to be the end of it, so we are basically seeing the growth kind of flatten out, but at the same time, you see demand for uh, the new generation of products coming in. So, Wi Fi 6. Like is getting to be the mainstay. We had the Wi Fi on the fifth generation before, now it's the sixth generation, which 
people or the consumer is very well aware that there is something called a bifurcation. Six. Previously, they were okay with whatever was going on the hiring virus at home. Now it's become necessary. The more time you spend at home, they see that uh, your bandwidth or your consumption has increased, your video input has increased. So, as the number of devices in your houses grow, as your environment is getting smarter and the house is getting more and more IoT smart, we basically see a lot of uh, demand for the Wi-Fi 6, which is driving a lot of IoT uh, in house smart home appliances usage into the house. Um, so, you basically need a device which can handle it. Similarly, we also see an uptake in speeds by the service provider, which allows for the almost one gig of speed coming. In some regions, we have uh, more than one gig. So, Wi Fi 7 is also slowly setting in, and we see that that would be the mainstay maybe around, around six months to one year. That will be slowly getting into inputs. Yes. Very much. Yes, um, it looks like. And thank you so much for being here with us. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank, thank you. Topics, yeah. Yes. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned to take it to know more about what is happening in Javix Technology Week 2021. Goodbye.